listen to that. Welcome back to another episode, guys. <laughs> it's pouring rain. I'm heading up into the hills, about two and a half hours away from my place, with the goal of getting there early enough to set up camp and sit around the campfire and make myself a lure. Tomorrow we're gonna to head out, we're gonna fish that lure, we're gonna land a trout, and we're gonna do a catch and cook. I'm saying we're going to with a whole lot of confidence, but obviously this could go either way and we might not end up with anything. So let's jump into a B-roll sequence and then we'll see how we go with the mission. The other night I saw you glance your everlasting light. Met your eyes, raise a sharp cover through the crowd. Righto guys, right up in the hills. The river's a lot smaller up here. It's a big river, this one. But in the camping areas, the cleared areas for camping, there's these epic concrete fireplaces. So we're gonna set up around this, put our fire in there, set up around here and make the lure. Let's get the camp done and let's get into it. Just gonna go collect some kindling and find that bit of wood and see what other wood I can find. Head back to camp, get the fire going and start this lure. After my walk and getting the fire going, I've picked up that stick and that bit of timber there was just on left of the fireplace. So I don't know what that is, but I'm gonna try those two. Everything I'm gonna use for the lures is in here. So hooks, lead, split rings, etc. I brought two part fast drying automotive epoxy, car uh, epoxy, clear coat, all right. Now, hopefully, if I get that on tonight, it's okay. I've got a saw, pliers, cuppers for the clear coat. I've got super glue, baking soda, some knives, drill, obviously, drill bits, file, sandpaper. That's about it, some, some different pliers and whatnot. A little tray, and I've got some acrylics. Burnt umber, I don't have black. The burnt umber, Calcium red, metallic silver, and rich gold. So we can draw on a bit of timber. Clamps, then we got a bit of light from the old campfire. So we're gonna sit by the campfire, build this lure, and go fishing tomorrow. So guys, we're gonna start with the saw. I'm gonna cut a chunk out of this and a chunk out of this. And then once I've done that, I'm going to try and carve both and see which one carves the best. And then that will determine which material we're gonna go with. Let's go, it's better. Better for you to see. I'm gonna bind on that up, I can feel it wet. All right, I don't think that's gonna be any good. Probably why the fire's got so much smoke coming out of it. Nice bit about there, I reckon. Oh, this is dry. This is dry. Is this some native wattle bush or something? Just it's just dead on the ground. So we're doing an inline spinner. It's not going to be very big. So I'm thinking it's probably only going to be about so long. What I didn't bring was a chisel and a hammer. I'm going to try and cut down, down here, and then down that side, and then cut it off. Oh, 
This fire held man on blowing straight at me. Oh, it's just turned. Well, I don't know what happened there, but when you cut from one side, this saw wants to bend in. That's the back of my lure there. What I might do is that's thick enough to make that at the bottom. Just change the shape a little bit. Yep, look at it, straight away. I'm holding the blade square and it's like wanting to, see that? Wanting to curve in. You can't see that. See, see how that's not straight? I don't know why it's doing that. Cheap, cheap saw. I think generally, like with a chainsaw, that means the teeth on one side are sharper than the other. So, potentially. But then you end up with this squealing noise here because you're fighting it. You see, you hear that? You're trying to twist it the other way. And it's like, no, I don't want to go the other way. What I'm going to try and do is get most of the shape while it's on this stick. I think I, I said I was going to cut it, but I'm going to try and carve it a bit and uh, sand it a bit. Just while I've got a bit more to hold on to. Get a carvy carvy knife here. It's a new carvy carvy knife. I've got the light set up for your best view. It's not necessarily always my best lighting position. I really wanted to do this campfire build thing. I thought it was a cool idea, but it's definitely not easy to film. Obviously light is an issue, uh, movement, you know, like I'm in the way of the light or whatever. Um, it's awkward with not having tools and stuff, but I'm sure we'll make it work. This saw from, uh, I got it after seeing marling, oh, after seeing marling baits rave on about it. It's the best. Like, I can't thank Nate enough for him suggesting this. It's a bare BS150D, Japanese made saw, and it's amazing. You won't regret it if you get yourself one if you're into lure making. I use it all the time. I'm probably due for another one. Like this one's probably getting a bit blunt. I asked guys for suggestions or things that they wanted to see more or better on the channel. And one of the things was with lure builds, a lot of guys wanted to see closer to the action. So I am gonna try and do that, especially at home as much as I can. But right now I'm actually struggling um, with getting everything in frame as it is just because well I've got smoke in my eyes again and um and of the location and everything else so but I think it was a really valid point um <laughs> the two two most sort of lure build related things were lighting um and and getting closer to the action and I agree with both very very valid um, and then of course the next lure build video I'm doing is at night time yeah, um, at a, by a campfire so um, not really improving on those things in this build but hopefully you understand um, because of the situation or the location um, and this style of video that's just the way it is I literally set up here because the wind was going the other way. So when I set up, I wouldn't be in the smoke. And since I set everything up, the wind has changed and constantly blown straight at me. And I'm just reluctant to move. I just don't want to move. So I'm just dealing with it. But I'm gonna complain about it a lot. So just be aware. <laughs> Get the sandpaper out and give it a sand and then we'll have to cut it off, I think, and start playing around with it a bit more seriously. Okay, so at least this way I can hold this, get some sandpaper, drop some sandpaper, and sort of <coughs> 
Now, we've got the super glue and the baking soda out because we've actually got a pretty good shape happening um, here, but obviously where the saw's cut in a couple of spots, I'm gonna fill them in and uh, might get a bit of lead. I've got these little bits of lead here. It's not gonna need much. This bigger one, it's a split shot, so it's a split down it. Put that on there. I'm just gonna... No? Yes, it is gonna. Right, we got that all the way through. And I put that one just in the belly there. Uh, eyeball center. Like that. I reckon that one will do. Put the drill bit. So I've got thin super glue. I'm going to put a couple drops in. Like that. Sit that there. Get this. And squeeze it in. Haha, <laughs> yeah. That's buried it completely. Right. I'm going to put that away. So what you want to do... You've probably all seen this before, but... You want to put a couple of drops and then sprinkle some baking soda. Got more drops. Oh, that's so dry, didn't it? Baking soda. Drops. And what that does is it makes sure that you get baking soda well, super glue, sorry, through all the baking soda. So you don't just have baking soda so thick and super glue soaked into that much. And if that crust cracks, it's just wet baking soda underneath. So the, um, that's the reason you do it in the layers like that. And the thinner your super glue, this is ultra thin, 2.5, the more likely it is to penetrate. That's just common sense. Beautiful. Well, not really, it's pretty ugly, but it's what we want, so it's beautiful in that sense. Now we go back a step to the sandpaper. So I won't show you all this because, well, you've seen sanding before. This is where we're at. So we're about to cut it off, have a look at it off the bit of timber to shape it, drill our holes. Well, a hole. There's only one hole through this because it's a spinner. Oh no. It flew overboard. Everything I'm using to make this lure is in my Milwaukee bag. Now, that's not to say I don't have a decent amount of tools. It is to say that if you wanna get into this, don't be put off or held back by the fact you don't have tons of, tons of power tools or a big workshop or whatever. If you wanna work, you wanna make a lure and you wanna give it a crack, you can do it with the bare minimums as you're seeing right here. So, especially if you're a young tacker and you really want to get into it and you talk to your parents and they don't want to spend a heap of money on, on tools, you know, let them know that you can just start with a knife and some pliers and really one trip to the hardware sh store is enough to get you started and your parents have probably got some tools lying around that you can use anyway, so. But also for other blokes out there, if you want to get into it, but you're not sure you're going to like it, you don't want to spend all the money, make a few lures this way. And if you enjoy it, you'll find it easier with the power tools. Just something to think about. That's why I like doing these challenges a bit. Takes you back to the basics. I reckon about there is the center. About there. And then through to the center. Just about there. It's not going to go all the way through, so we're going to have to come from both ends. Now, this is about taking your time. Slow and steady wins the race. All right. I connected that. Straight through, look at that. Sweet ass. Bang, bang, bang. This solves excess so we can cut it off. We want to bend it around the very finest 
point of this. So you want as fine, um, as fine a loop as I can make out in the bush. Pretty happy with that. You guys see that? Nice little loop. I'm going to slide it through from the back. Because we've got the hook hanger, obviously. So we want to slide it through from the back. Slide that in. We want to get our thin super glue on the wire. And then head it in. And make sure it's facing the bottom. And then out the front, we got this big loose wobbly hole you probably can't see. So I'm going to fill that with super glue. And you can use the wire just kind of guide it down. What I'm going to do, as soon as I've spilled it everywhere anyway, I might as well seal the lure with super glue. That'll strengthen it and make it water tight. Let's just put all four of our colours in. Our colours won't show very good in this dark, but we're going to put some gold in here. Going to take some of this burnt umber and make a darker brownie gold colour. Belly, we're going silver. Now, hand painting is nowhere near as good as airbrushing, so don't expect a fantastic result for you guys. And I'm not going to take my time with it either. I'm going to go gold. Throwing the gold in, something like that. And we go to our brown gold that we made. I fluke a lot of stuff with the airbrush. But give me a paintbrush and it's all out the window. Actual burnt umber. We throw it bang over the top. All we're doing is tapering in the same color scheme from light to dark, bottom to top. It's a real common color scheme in fish. Give it a real good brush, wash. Don't get any paint on it. Get the water off it, and then just going to go front to back, oh. front to back, front to back, wash that off, front to back. So what I'm going to do is uh, give this a dry by the fire, and then give it some touch-ups, but like I said, it's never going to be perfect. I'm hand painting in low light, and it's a campfire build. Right. So I'm going to get the gold and just literally over the whole top, real light. The SD card went full on the other camera and all I'm doing is eyes and clear coat so I'm not replacing it. So I've just got this, hopefully you can see that, drill bit. I've mixed up this colour. Somewhere about where the eye is. Boom. I didn't bring the measurer. One to two, two to one. So two of this one, one of this one. I reckon. Cap for cap. That'll do, that's gonna be close enough. Now I've given it a little bit extra hard enough in the hopes that it'll cure a little bit quicker and be good for tomorrow. Mix that up. Which looks better than expected. 
That's not this stupid light. Alright, so I'm just gonna leave this to drip over the edge of the table I pack everything up like that and then I'll go sit it up the other way in front of the fire for a bit and then when I go to bed I think I'll sit it in the back of the car oh, morning guys it rained and was cold last night but getting a bit of... oh, sorry about that I turned the camera on and it said 34% and then it turned off and said low battery so I got brekkie going and this is what it looks like in the daylight. Let's get away from the steam. Uh, obviously, like I said, not the greatest. But dark, still gold, down to light, got the spots. Lighter belly. Couple of runs, obviously I had no turner for the clear coat. And that spot right on the belly there is where the lead hole was. And... Um, it looks like the paint didn't stick to that baking soda and uh, super glue very well. But otherwise, for something I cut up and carved up at the campfire last night, I'm pretty happy. Hopefully you can see, but I reckon I want that about there. Just something like that then. And try a different approach. Right there. Right. Crimped on. And then the big one. Like that. And give it a toe point right here. Everything's loaded, car's locked up, and I'm heading up this little track. There's a campground that I couldn't get into last night higher up, and I'm pretty sure this track goes from this one to that one. Anyway, I think the plan is, well my plan is, I'm going to walk this track as far as I can and then hop in a river. And that way, hopefully I'm up above where there's been too much fishing pressure. Humans in, in general have a bit of a lazy streak and a lot of fishermen will set up camp and they'll fish from their camp up they'll walk down fish up to their camp I won't do the extra walk to fish that extra bit and sometimes that pays off so that's what I'm doing now got the lure rigged up I'll get to the water I'll give it a cast see how it goes and then we'll just jump straight into fishing it hook up I'm pretty sure he just grabbed the lure and not the hooks yep teeth there's a teeth mark there there he grabbed the lure from the side because it's a spinner I thought I'll just put a treble on the back but maybe I should have put a treble underneath oh 
I either hit a rock or got touched again. Yep, yep, yep. Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! That is the best! Not the biggest trout by any stretch of the imagination. I picked up a bit of wood at camp and made that lure last night. You saw, obviously. But that feeling is amazing. Now we are going to do a catch and cook. But it's still early and it has been tough, but I'm going to let this guy go and we'll catch and cook somebody else. Some, somebody else? We'll catch and cook another fish. What a gorgeous fish. Not a bad fish. Beautiful location to catch it on the lure. I'm going to leave it on and we're going to keep exploring because we are going to catch a few more and tonight we're going to cook up a fresh delicious trout. Should surprise no one that I've gone with the JD Eddie Lip Ripper. I'm going to give out a few casts for a while. If that does no good, I've got a Molex Duberino, a Joe's Fly, a little spinner and trout magnet. A few different things to try so I'll run through them. Um, I'm going to call the mission a success. We did land a fish and we could have cooked it. Um, we'll probably cook a fish we just catch on another lure uh, So we'll keep going um, And that's not to say I won't run it again a bit later, but I will run it again another day um, There's a few teeth marks through it now. It really needs another coat of clear and I'm gonna bang a belly treble in it at home and we'll run it again Give it a full-on day and see how it goes, but let's keep fishing and get a fish to cook Yep, 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 finally. Oh, 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 oh shivers. He's gonna be our cook up fish. There we are, guys, the JD Eddie Libra does the job in the brown trout pattern. I'm gonna uh, clean this fella off camera and put him in the bag, and then uh, we'll keep fishing. Come on. Oh, oh. Another one. Oh, guys, this is so frustrating. Like, what is going on? Yep. No! No! Come on! Top ahead. What a great looking snake. Can you guys see that? Feel out there. It's too cold up here for most species at this moment. The cobheads, the highland cobhead, he loves it up here. Look at him, oh, look. Notice me? What a great snake. To keep your eyes open, even on days like this, guys. Beautiful little cobber head. Had I stood on him, he would have uh, felt the need to spike me back. But because I uh, was quiet and gentle and approached him quietly, he slithered off into the grass there and he's hiding from me. So just keep your eyes open, because if you step on one of them, they will... Um, they will tag you, that's just the way it is, but they're not out to get you. So we're safe to go past now. He's moved down in there, as long as I don't step on some up here that upsets him. 
and he'll be probably just curled up in there hiding. But what a beauty. Well, that's probably gonna do us fishing wise. I am drenched and freezing and feel miserable. Um, the excitement picked up there at the end with drop, <laughs> drop after drop after drop. And then uh, that beautiful little copperhead, like what a fantastic little vine there. I've seen three of them in my whole life. So um, that's, that was a highlight for me over the fish and everything. Um, just fantastic. But we're back on the path. Uh, we will get to the river, obviously, because we cross it a few times, but we're going to make it back. And I reckon I might pack up camp and head home. I'm freezing cold and drenched, and it's meant to get below zero tonight um, with the potential for, <laughs> for snow. So uh, I'll pass on that, I think. I'll go home and cook the fish up at home and enjoy it with some, some other stuff. Maybe put some chips on. Oh, so... If I don't catch any more fish, I'll see you guys cooking that fella that we have in the bag up. Righty guys, back home in the kitchen. I've got the pan here, I've got some butter, some lemon juice, and some garlic salt, and our trout, obviously. So I'm gonna light the cooker. I'm gonna chuck in a fair amount of butter, just like that. I'm gonna let that melt for a second. I've got chips in the air fryer. So I'm gonna have this with some chips. Gotta have butter when you cook fish, in my opinion. We're gonna add lemon juice straight to the pan, and then that is going to cook into the fish flavor. And just before we lay the fish in, we're gonna give it a sprinkle of garlic salt. So we're laying it onto it. Get this nice and hot. It should sizzle when we put the fish in. We're gonna give that a light sprinkling. Lay them straight in there like that. Yummo. And we're actually gonna flip it a couple of times. Just keep it cooking on both sides evenly. So, flesh looks good. Fresh trout, wild trout, and yum yum. That was about as awkward as you can get. Cheeks are already cooking. And Now, we'll have edited this down, but at this point, it's a to it's only been a total of 4 minutes 20 since we started a recording, so it's a really quick process to cook fish. Don't ever want to overcook it, and the beauty of actually turning your fish a few times is you'll get to the point where you see the flesh pull away and you know that it's cooked. Oh, look at the skin coming off. Yum. Look at that. Look at the brown crispy on that. That's delicious. For 10 minutes total film time, so we're looking at probably only about six or seven minutes of that of cooking time and she's almost done. Not quite there, there's a little bit of pink in the middle, but it's really not that far off. And you'll notice, heat's down a bit. You don't want to keep it full tilt heat because you will burn the fish. Meat's pulling away from the bones. There's no pink in there. That's done. So what I'm gonna do, Flop the tail off like that. Put it out in the center so it gets a bit more crispy. Then get the rest of the fish off on a plate. A few air fryer chips. Get us fish and chips with chicken salt. That's Aussie. Try a chip. Just jumped outside with the cooked food because it wasn't meant to be camping mission, so. Bit of crunch in the tail. Got a couple of bones. Not as good as it should be. 
generally I cook it up a bit better than that. The skin's good. Mmm, the skin's real good. Mmm. And the meat. See that? Just pushing it away. People talk about tree, uh, bones and trout. But when you cook it right, cook it enough but don't overcook it, it just comes away like that. Main, main flavour there is trout, obviously. It's got that lemony zing from the lemon juice and then that salty garlic. Garlic salt flavour right over the top. Fantastic. Anyway guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. I hope you enjoyed this uh, challenge. Something a little bit different. Um, I enjoyed sitting by the fire and making a lure and then seeing if it worked and then catching a fish. <laughs> Obviously the fish I'm eating is not that fish because I got a bit cocky and released it. Um, the amount of hits I got that just did not hook up was something I haven't seen before trout fishing. Like. Um, well over 30 hits for the day. I don't know if I filmed them all or put them all in the edit, but well over 30 hits. A couple of fish hooked and dropped and then only two fish landed, so that was something different. Um, if you liked the video, guys, give it a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. Drop a comment on what you want to see or any feedback that you have, um, and we appreciate that as well. Uh, we've got Patreon if you want early access to videos and be able to win lures and things like that. There'll be a link for that. Um, otherwise, thank you all very much. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to fish every opportunity and we'll catch you in the next one.